Well, hey guys, I'm starting off in a bit of a sort of slightly different sort of way. I'm starting off with the information first. And that's um, mostly because uh, this thing keeps slowing down when I try to change places and uh, pages. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at a church in Weymouth called um, St. John's. Let's find the little bit of blurb. See everything slows down with the screen capture we're on to the point of not wanting to open at all and slow my voice down and generally freezing. So anyway this place is St John's Church and it's up in a place called Green Hill in Weymouth. This is it here. And uh, I'll play the video for you in a sec. There it is. So we'll go back to here. Now Wiki says that it was um, built between 18 oh, I don't know 60 and 64 by some guy called Philip Dodson. I can't find diddly squat about Philip Dodson. I don't know. But um, the church was built to a design by this guy. This is our guy. This is our mason. Our magic mason. So he was um, article to Pugin. So Pugin was, uh, I mean, he wasn't very old either when he was article to Pugin. Because if he was born in 1809, he was article to Pugin in 1824. So he would have been, I don't know, can't work it out, not very old. 14, 15? And then he started his own practice in 1830. So then he would have been uh, 21. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Enough of that. So he designed his works included 35 churches and chapels, 15 parsonages, 12 schools and 20 other large public buildings and private homes. His ecclesiastical works included St Mary the Virgin's Church Woodlands and oh, a whole pile of other stuff. He was also a lithographer and oh, look at that another date because um, lithographs and aquatints um, interesting a sort of a, a early photography or photography so here we go let's do this and hope it comes out so here we go his church now these places here to the left they're all under and quite a lot under as well look quite a bit and similarly all the houses along the seafront well not houses hotels and some of them are um, pretty old as well. King George III uh, loved Weymouth allegedly and came here swimming so it sort of gained uh, a name for being like a place that the royals loved and paid homage to and there's a statue here to King George III and he stayed at the Royal Hotel and oh, all sorts of stuff. Anyway I'll look at that another time. Today we're going to look at this. So here it is 1860 to 64 looking a bit mashed up there and it's built of um, primarily Portland stone but there's a lot of like sandstone features on it that are quite frankly knackered it's it was um, restored as well at some point quite quite a, a, a recent date to the building of it it was something like 18 80 or something it had some restoration done and some extra building work so I I strongly suspect that this place was um a bit of a, a ruin or something because this stuff looks medieval and I know they can recreate stuff like they do now reproduce things but not convinced so this um, nave this nave here as you go in it's 
quite lovely. It's quite, you know, they do these arches, little arches and arches. It's all resonance, isn't it? All about the resonance of the place. And I think this is sandstone because it's fallen to pieces. And limestone is much more durable. And it's lost so much of its detail. And these houses here are under. Those houses, those at the top there are under. And those across the road are underground as well. So here, you can see this green here. But this here, it's like, um, looking out, because Charlie Jeans found one of these on a church. And here's one here. And it goes up the wall. It's copper. It's green. And bendy, bendy, bendy all up here. And it goes right up to the top. And it goes up to the bit of Antiquitech, Tech Mazda on the top, which is the um, weather vane. It blows in the wind. Creates a little bit of kinetic energy, some wind, wind power, wind energy. And around here, look at some of the other stuff. It gets really interesting around the corner. This stuff here, this brickwork here, hang on. Let me go back a bit. This is nice here, isn't it? I love the look of that. Looks old, looks like it's been underground. Looks like, um, some of that is sandstone and some of it is brick, which I think is a bit, uh, a lime, which is, I think is a bit odd. <clears throat> and that there, that, that looks, you see, he watch wise up stuff and he shows wood that is, he believes has turned to stone. That's what that reminds me of there. Go along a bit, hang on. There. You see what I mean? How much like wood does that look? There. Maybe wrong. And then you've got all this sort of like very pretty windows. I want to look at this one as well. But even this looks as if there's two different styles going on. God, why won't it pause? I'm having so many problems with my laptop lately. Pause. Right, yeah, so it looks as if this is a rebuild. Do you see what I mean? All that sort of um, very fancy inner work and then the other work and similarly above you've got the sandstone and limestone mashup. There's so a lot of places around here built of Portland stone because of Portland, which is literally sort of five miles away over the road. The door there. This stuff here is um, a ventilation and heating system that they've had put in, which I'm pretty sure the congregation are pleased about because I used to go to church as a little girl and I remember being absolutely freezing cold really chilled to the bone see your breath on the air this thing here and then I noticed this and then I got really excited because I knew there was going to be one gargoyle there were probably going to be quite a few and there were there are look at it that's, I think that's two buildings old building new building it was probably a bit of a ruin and they but they did it up. I think that this vicarage thing next door might be um, an 1860 sort of job. This is like a cat, cat demon. They've all got their arses stuck up in the air as well. This is a bear cat. Oh, they're just so creepy. I took some stills of them as well for the end. This is a regular demon. And that looks like um, our friend the 
weird thing that goes in the night, doesn't it? You know, the the weird slug thing that comes out the, the top of the night? Unless erosion has taken away some of the features, but I don't think so. I think it's um, some sort of worm. So I walk around the end here. There's plenty of this thing. They really, it's real, real nice church machine. See all these. <laughs> you can see, you know, when you see this sort of thing. Let's go back. This on the corner here. That is done to to sort of like give it strength if it if it's vibrating all these sort of like double like I don't know what what you call them like um dovetailing things joints yeah okay and I looked again at this stuff underneath the roof because it it just looks medieval this is the sort of thing you see on monasteries not on Victorian churches and yeah, it's high gothic, but that looks original and not original Victorian. Ooh, I wasn't expecting it to to have all this sort of like um, medieval-y look to it, to be honest. I thought it was going to be one of your regular old uh, brick-built Victorian jobs, you know, like that bloody thing in London. But it's good to get out and look at other churches there was all sorts of stonage about but no gravestones this is the vicarage or the adjoining building now that I think may have been built in 64 this now this is where I find the crypt so yeah we do have underground I'd love to go in there and I was talking to somebody and they were saying that um, this church is going to open its doors to the homeless and I thought oh what bloody time there's so many homeless people in Weymouth and here's this is quite a good one as well it's like a pig owl demon and then I noticed one peeking at me up here this is creepy look at his teeth Yeah, right. We're putting demons on the church to protect it from demons. Mm. Makes sense. Now this all got quite interesting. It's uh, somebody has like broken in and they're sleeping in there. There's a homeless person. Got it together in there. Didn't look like he was there then. If he was, I would have spoken to him her uh, probably a lad so yeah so this bit here um, I just think this may be an addition this bit on the end here this might be a bit what was built it's a slightly different feel to the rest of it you see what I mean not as ornate and then you come here and you've got all this sandstone this stuff going on again lovely windows gargoyles medieval looking gargoyles eroded sandstone heads they're even more eroded than the ones in London maybe something to do with the salt air you know I've got to pay devil's advocate those stone those uh, crosses are stone as well there's another one there another of the heads it must be saints, I think. I don't know. There, there's obviously some sort of like um, architectural features book that gives you like um, designs. I build your own church. Yeah, and here, can you see? It's like there's one church and then another one underneath. This is really nice stuff. This is nice old medieval stained glass. Look at that. You see how they paint the face on? That's quite lovely. But if you look at this, can you see what I mean? The inner stuff is an old, is the old, and this other stuff looks um, like it's all been put on afterwards. 
probably wrong you know i'm not a british architect i'm not trained in this stuff but i don't know when you see features like this and a mud flooded area or a mudded area or a mud flowed area or an, uh, signs of an event you've got to be a bit suspicious a tower bell tower with a clock and vents there's a vent there and there's the wind vane technasma hanging over the top all that lovely detail it's italianate fantastic looking place anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and there's a few pictures of the gargoyles to follow down here there's a statue of queen victoria i did uh, her as well Thank you.